But okay, applications. So really, you don't want to be running bash scripts or simple py.py files. I mean, that's sort of boring, isn't it? So you're here to run really complicated stuff, like big Python libraries or big HPC codes or things like that. And it has to be installed. And let's say I'd estimate about half our time is spent with helping people install software on the cluster. So yeah, like, in, yeah, a lot, a lot of time. <laughs> so in this little 10 minute talk here, we can't possibly tell you what you need to know, but there is one main point we want. And if you scroll down, we can see these four ways uh, of- I think we are sharing the oh, field oops. of notes. Right, sorry. Okay, that was not good. Okay, so applications here. If we scroll down a little bit, there's four main things, four main ways of getting software on the cluster. So one, stuff can be installed through the operating system. Like you take the package manager and you're doing installing program X, or you download an installer and run it. So this works on your own computer because you're the only one there. It doesn't work on the cluster because once we did this, then it would change the version for everyone. So would you want your the version of Python or TensorFlow you're using to suddenly change in the middle of your project and you have to redo everything? No, clearly not. So that's why basically almost nothing is installed through the operating system. Or what is there are basic utilities and we don't update them. This yeah, also like means... Uh, in for example, in Alto, uh, all of our compute nodes they are like they start from this minimal operating system image, to, which contains like the minimal amount of software, and this is loaded into the memory. So there's no like really place to store uh, like install the software even. Mm -hmm. So so like they are like they only have like the few Linux tools that you normally use and few other applications, yeah. but most of the stuff is not there. Can you point the cursor at the point we're talking about, by the way? Yeah. So the next point, we can install stuff for you. And we will install different versions of different things. And you can load just the version you need using something called the module system. And this is something that, well, the typical way of doing things. So you ask us, say, I need open foam development version as of right now. And we've got a system we can go and click a few buttons and it will start installing there. Different clusters do this differently. Some clusters install a lot of things that users need and some clusters are sort of like they install um, the compilers and it's up to most people to install their own things. Okay, so the next step. So someone has installed the base of what you need. For example, Python but you need the different libraries on it, like PyTorch or TensorFlow or whatever it may be, in which case you need to do a little bit more work. So for that, you can take their base and install a virtual environment or Conda environment, and then install the extra libraries you need just for your user. So you have full control, you can take the versions you need. You can even have different versions in different projects. I would Finally, have... Yeah. yeah, mention uh, here that like if if you think about like you have a program that you need to install some help with, like you encounter you try to install some program on your laptop or something, and you what do you do when problems occur? Uh, you mm -hmm. Google it, of course. Like that's what we do as well. Like if we encounter a problem, we we Google and then we are in Stack Overflow somewhere. And somebody shows some commands that okay, like run these and and. Yeah. That's one way of solving the problem, but in a cluster environment, because they are usually so specialized because it needs to be this shared cluster environment where stuff can be run through the queue. Like mm -hmm. they might be completely different software and completely different problems that don't affect, don't happen with normal laptops mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So usually the best way of finding information about software that you need on a cluster is through the documentation. <laughs> Is 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 mm -hmm. uh, it's unfortunate. Like nobody wants to read documentation; mm -hmm. they want to do work. But uh, unfortunately, that is usually the best way of doing it. And the second best way is to contact the people managing the 
cluster because they might know if there's a problem uh, like with a certain kind of a software. It's, if it's co complicated, maybe they have experience and maybe somebody else asked about this software before. And this will speed up a lot uh, your installation problems. Like you, you can find the solutions much faster. Of course, you can try uh, Googling stuff and, and try solu solving yeah. the that. But often you go, you reach dead end, dead ends, uh, if you do yeah. that way. So, so yeah. I would recommend asking for support in these cases. Yeah. Okay. Um. So if we scroll down through the page, we won't talk about anything more. We just covered what the basics are. But there's mm -hmm. some links here, like for example, how to do this with Python and things like that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll quickly show, like from the previous talk uh -huh. we gave, gave yesterday, this view. So what what software often is that, like when we we yesterday we talked about hardware and and what is the operating system and so forth, and then we talked about like you're most likely doing something with these applications here, like the applications can. Often be they can have like a graphical element, but in in clusters you often use these in in these client modes. So for example, there's been a lot of talk in the notes about like for example Jupyter, which is like a web interface that you use. So in a cluster, you often want to convert these Jupyter notebooks into Python code that you can run without the web interface because the actual program that you're running is is not. Like it's not the Jupyter notebook, but it's it's the Python code, right? So so the Jupyter notebook is the GUI, the, the graphical user interface. So so it's usually a good idea to like whenever you start to use program, figure out what is the command line interface for it, or what what is the way of using it from the terminal, because then uh, you can more easily adapt it into these cluster environments where you can run it via code instead of like clicking buttons. Of course, it's it, the interface might be annoying, <laughs> uh, but, but that is the best way of automating the stuff again. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so if you scroll down, there is some links you can read yourself, like information on some of the main different languages that people use. But we should go on now, because we're yeah quickly running out of time. Should we briefly show the module system? Yes. Which is the next page. And I will add to the notes. Um, so module is a tool that lets us manage multiple versions on the cluster. So basically, instead of making Python 2 or 3.8 available for everyone, you can do module load Python slash 3.8, and it will load. Or module load open foam slash well, whatever version number it is. Um, yeah, can we show how it yeah, I works? Can, I can demonstrate. Okay. So, so Demo. here I, if I run the, the command presented here, so here, here we have uh, like these modules. They depend on the cluster again, but but the same oh, tools yeah, that's are a good used. Point. The same what tools are used in, in like like the uh, the module it system almost... itself uh, is used in all clusters uh, yeah. to install because it's it's the best way of like making it sort of multiple different software can be used by mm -hmm. multiple different users. Yeah. But for example, in 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 our cluster, we have this Anaconda module, which contains a lot of like Python stuff. Yeah. So if I run this module show, it will produce me okay. this kind of. So this shows output. what's happening inside of the module. Like the module yeah. does the stuff, and let's not worry about what yeah. it means. It, it sets a bunch of environment variables so that your terminal will then find the software. Yeah. So if I load the module here, look, if I try this example, I type. So Python 3. So this program, Python 3, this program type tells us where a program is, like where what Python 3 would be. And if I and run this version, this, OK, so, it's so fairly out. old. So now if I run this module load Anaconda. Yes, and now we type Python 3. 
And what do you know? It's something different. And then if we check the Python version, it's now Python 3.10. Yeah. And you and can this... use this module list, for example, to list what modules you have loaded. So often yeah. you load these modules mm -hmm. in the Slurm script that you mm -hmm. have. So in the script itself, you load the stuff you need, and then you use the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so is this basically what we need to teach then? I guess there's different commands like module purge that can clear yeah. everything. You can unload certain modules. Can you do yeah. module spider anaconda? And let's look at different versions. Yes. I guess it takes a while while it's looking for everything that's there. OK, here we go. So there's a lot of different versions available, ranging from 2020 to 2023. Um, yeah, OK. Yeah, I'll, I'll so, quickly mention that like uh, in, in these cluster environments, it's not usually a good idea to set some defaults. So it's, it's not a good idea to load something always or to set some, like in many, many software, uh, installation instructions. You have installation instructions like set these environment variables into your bash RC, which mm -hmm. is this kind of like mm -hmm. a file that that set these settings for every time you you log into the system. You have these settings enabled, and these can easily become like problematic because in many like you have probably realized these cluster systems are complicated, and when you have a complicated system and you add extra stuff into that complicated system, you can create un unforeseen consequences. So uh, it's usually not a good idea to like load everything by default, especially if you have, are planning on using multiple different softwares, because like then these might clash and they might clash with the, like the overwriting system that you're using and all sorts of like hell <laughs> might break loose. So like uh, as a general rule, it, it's not a usually a good idea to load everything by default because that can like like create these ripple effects that you don't see coming until like suddenly your uh, stuff doesn't work anymore. So so like usually it's a good idea to like activate a load the stuff that you need whenever you need it. In and usually it's done in the Slurm scripts so that the mm -hmm. stuff is like loaded. The specific stuff is loaded for the specific script that you're using. Yes. So yeah, that's basically a bit about it for the modules, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, full people reference can read here this that you can, yourself. Yeah, check the yeah. commands and and there's a lot of extra information there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Should we go on to storage then? 